I served on the Walnut Creek City Council for 21 years, five times as mayor, and I was a member of the um, ABAG executive team for 19 years and served two years as president. The importance of regionalism is working together cooperatively. All of the cities and the counties in this area are, in effect, independent. They like to uh, feel that they, they control their own destiny, and indeed they do. Each community is somewhat different, and I think cities particularly take pride in what they have to offer. But what one city does affects another, for example, in transportation, housing, jobs, etc. And in order to try to make the region work as a whole, they have to sit down and cooperate on planning so that one city is not overwhelmed, for example, by what another does. And I think the importance of regionalism is sitting together and talking things out ahead of time, rather than complaining and suing one another and setting up barriers that uh, may be happening in San Francisco, San Mateo County right now, if you've been listening to the news. So the regionalism helps to quell those kinds of problems. I think the shared goal comes about in that transportation is one of the major drivers of the, of the entire region. Where the jobs are, where people live, are the other aspect that has to be taken into account. Where do you spend your money for transportation improvements? Out in um, East Contra Costa, Alameda? Or should you be spending it uh, closer to the bay where the larger populations are? On the other hand, if people are living in the outer regions, how are they going to get to their jobs? How are they going to get into the central area of the Bay? Those are the issues that both are facing together. And one of the things that has come from the planning that has been done together over the last decade is trying to see that more housing is built where the transportation systems are, where the jobs are, and not continue to pay farmland far out uh, to put in housing. There may be very nice housing, but is that really the goal of what we should be looking at in terms of people's lives? In terms of regionalism and, um, and you being a part of the executive committee of ABEC, what was your role or contribution in, or what happened under your watch um, at that time? Well, it started when I was the vice president and we're looking at better working relationship between ABAG and MTC. So we went through a series, a long series of meetings trying to involve people from both of the agencies and trying to figure out a better way to do better planning. For a while, ABAG was doing something here, MTC was doing something here, and they were working on similar aspects of the problem, but not together. So I think what I accomplished with the help of an awful lot of other people, was to bring together a new way of doing joint planning. And in that, we also brought in the Bay Area Air Quality District and uh, ultimately uh, Bay Conservation and Development Commission because all of us are working towards similar goals of making the region work in a better fashion of spending money from all of those agencies where it is going to do the most good for the entire region, for making life more pleasant, to put it another way, for all of the people who live here. So that was started as I was vice president and came into being as I was leaving the presidency with the Joint Powers Authority that combines the four. And so I think planning has been uh, better since that time and I think it will continue to get better as these groups truly work together and what dollars they have to spend are more wisely spent. What years and time span was this then? Um, it started, um, I guess, around the year 2000 and was finished around the year 2003, perhaps, in, in that time frame. So where do you think regional, regionalism is headed in the future? Well, I hope in the direction that we have seen in the last few years, and that is, again, the working together. And this is a cooperative. There is nothing that is being forced, really, upon any of the cities or counties, with the possible <laughs> exception of the housing that the state requires um, a bag to distribute approximately every seven years, the housing, uh, their new housing plan. You don't have to build the housing, but you have to show where it can go in your community. We're talking about all income levels. That's been very difficult for some communities. 
where it's easy to provide for the above average income housing, it's not easy to plan for uh, housing for those who are at the lower socioeconomic area uh, level. And uh, that is the only thing that is, quote, sort of imposed upon cities and counties. Uh, unhappily, in many cases, but the last time it was accepted and communities understood that they did have a responsibility. We don't feel that everybody should be on the highway from Merced to come and take care of your yard or clean your house or do some of the other jobs that are very important in our society but the people who do them cannot necessarily afford to live in the community. So we're trying to address that imbalance. That takes more old automobiles, for example, off the highways. It improves the transportation system for everyone, if people can live closer. So that's the goal, and I'm hoping that we can continue in that direction. It's not easy, but I think it is what we should be doing in this region. ABAG was founded in 1961. And it was one of the first, it was the first council of government in California. And I'm not sure if it was the first in the nation. I think there may have been one or two ahead of it. But the idea here in the Bay Area is we have always been a region of new ideas, new thinkers. You can look at our, the universities that exist here, UC Berkeley, Stanford, uh, private universities. We have a higher percentage of people who graduate from universities than I believe almost any other region in the U.S. And in some of these cities, uh, like Walnut Creek, it's very high. It's, I think it's around 60% of the residents have at least a bachelor's degree. And I say that not to make us elitist, but to say we are an area that has always produced or long produced people who are on the cutting edge of new ideas, of trying to put into practice new ideas. And I think that is going to continue in this region. Uh, I was also rather surprised to hear the other day that even with the downturn of the economy in California, we are still the eighth largest economy in the world. And I thought surely we would have dropped <laughs> because of what is happening with jobs and industry, but not so. What are the new industries going to be? Um, I don't know. We certainly think that biotech is part of it. We think that genetic research is part of it. And I'm sure there are things that we haven't thought of at all, but are being thought of right now in those centers of learning. So as long as we can maintain a, our university systems, and that's something I think we need to spend more time addressing, particularly the public universities, then I think this, this region is going to stay on the map. And also, you realize that our region from the tip of Santa Clara to the top of Napa represents a wide diversity of cities, of kinds of things, agriculture, vineyards, et cetera, are still a very much a part of the Bay Region, and which some people do not take into account. So that Bay is uh, sort of the magnet, you might say, for the region. And a couple of things that started early with ABAG was the Bay Trail, going around San Francisco and San Pablo Bay. It is, I think it's close to 500 miles total, and more than half of it has already been put in place. And as things develop or change, the idea is to fill in the pieces that are missing. They're now looking at extending that up the, up the delta, which I think also makes a lot of sense. But um, the bay, as I say, is a magnet and always has been. And, and the health of that bay has uh, a great deal to do with the health of the counties around it. Whether they think they touch the bay or not, they do. And uh, I believe that that will continue to be a focus. And I think it gives us a focus that is not available to many other regions in the U.S. Well, having just rewatched the saving of San Francisco Bay on uh, public uh, television the other night, um, I realized that without ABAG's participation in coming up with a plan for halting the development of the bay, we would pr probably today see it filled in. It was not an easy victory. 1964, I believe, is when they finally, uh, I believe Governor Pat Brown recognized that there was something to be said for stopping the bay filling. It is now coming to fruition, as you see in various parts of the Bay, having it returned to its more natural setting. Napa County, for example, and the city of Napa were early proponents of this. They wanted to stop the flooding in their city, and they stopped it by being able to open up the areas, the salt flats, et cetera, that would prevent it. Uh, that's a major accomplishment. Down in the South Bay, in Santa Clara County and Alameda County, getting rid of some of the salt ponds and returning that to the natural area. It means the bay is healthier and cleaner. 
it means the people who live along the bay are not going to be subjected to the flooding that occurred when those things were all filled in. So I think that's a major, major accomplishment that was started in the ABAG process. And ABAG is the one that is continuing, as I say, to put in the trail around the bay. That's major. Also, uh, having early on established a, a committee to look at the airports. We have three major airports that are right on the bay. And if we see a rise in sea level, uh, three of them are going to be losing runways. We'll also be losing part of our highways and part of BART, another major accomplishment. Now, ABAG was the early planner for BART and where it went and how it was to be built. Uh, maybe we would do it somewhat differently if it started today, but that was another major accomplishment, a transportation uh, section that pulled together the various sections. However, BART was built to only <laughs> feed Oakland and San Francisco. Um, San Jose opted out, they didn't want to be in it, and now it has become the largest city in the Bay Area. So I think we need to continue to do, make some things happen that, that ties this region together. But those are also major accomplishments of going back close to 50 years. Talk about some of the highlights out of MTC. Uh, well, I don't, I wasn't as closely associated with it until more recently, but the Metropolitan Transportation Commission was given the money from state and federal sources to look at the transportation system in the Bay Area. And indeed they have, and they have done, I think, a very fine job over the years. Um, looking at Interstate 80, which is a major thoroughfare, and, you know, goes all the way across the U.S. basically, and ends here in, in the Bay Area. Uh, Highway 580 going out through uh, Livermore, Pleasanton, um, Interstate 680 that goes north and south. And those are all accomplishments that have come into their present form thanks to MTC. They've also been supportive of BART in many ways. Uh, both with money and with helping with planning then after they came into being. Um, then the other smaller transportation systems that exist, bus systems primarily. And they've been trying to tie those bus systems together over the years. Uh, why should there be, what, 30 different transit agencies? Partly <laughs> because of the high wages that are paid in some of the inner districts and the outer district said, no, uh, we don't need to pay those wages. And if we come together, it's going to cost an awful lot more. That is something that still needs to be worked out. And whether a single bus system is the answer or better coordination and perhaps combining some of the smaller systems is something that needs to be looked at. And I think MTC is doing precisely that. And they also are involved in looking at the airports, transportation to and from them. So I think that they have been a major factor in getting people around in the, in the area. And I know that there are communities that feel that they were left out. For example, East Contra Costa feels left out. They've been paying the BART taxes since that was passed in 62, but don't have BART. Some of them are not happy they'll be getting eBART rather than the full system. But I think it's a way to meet the needs, and, I, and MTC has certainly been a major factor in that. Also, in using the rail lines that exist, the capital corridors, making that a real system that serves uh, from the Bay Area up to Sacramento, and then the, um, what's it called, coming over the, from uh, Stockton. Sorry, the, the name of that particular route escapes me. It goes from there down to San Jose, uh, through Livermore, et cetera. Those have been major accomplishments that have also been helped by um, MTC, putting funding and expertise into uh, developing those systems for commuters and also for other people. I guess I'm I, leadership style. I try to give everybody the opportunity to be heard. I will not put up with bad, bad manners. I believe that you're in a public forum and you can disagree as much as you choose, but you don't have to be disagreeable in the process. At the end, we have to come to a conclusion and you may not get your way this time, but I expect you to give your no vote <laughs> respectfully. And uh, I try to keep control of the meeting and not allow people to take off on tangents, try to get back to the issue at hand that we're discussing, uh, treat our staff with respect, whether you think they did a good job or a poor job. I don't think the public forum is where you castigate them. Uh, if, you, if you feel you have issues, I think there are many opportunities privately to do so. Uh, and I guess that's how I have conducted the meetings both here and as mayor of Walnut Creek is to try to keep, to bring civility back to public meetings, 
but at the same time to offer everybody an opportunity to be heard. So I guess that's what I would describe as how I've tried to conduct meetings and conduct myself. Looking ahead to uh, the future, how do you see how do you see MTC and ABAG joining forces to, to provide even better services and, and serving the Bay Area residents in an in even better and more improved manner? Well, um, I, I'm, there's always room for improvement, let's put it that way. But I believe that that improvement has started. I think the planners are really working together. I think the board members on both agencies uh, are working together in, in a better fashion and following sort of the same thing I just outlined as what I tried to do as, as president. Um, being respectful of other points of view, we're not going to agree on everything, we understand that. But there are always good ideas that come up that you may not have thought of, and I think we owe it to the person who has brought that idea forward to pursue finding out whether it's something that we should be looking into in greater detail. And I also understand we can't look into every great idea in great detail. But there are some that come, and I think we owe it to the whole region to investigate other ways of doing things better. So um, I, I think that is working now, and I expect it to continue. I see no reason that it should change direction other than to be more cooperative. And I guess the word cooperation keeps coming up, but it's the key, in my opinion, as to how you get things done. Besides the equity and housing issue, are there other issues that you believe the two agencies should, uh, should tackle? Well, one of them, I think, is getting back to the bus systems. Many people, particularly in the larger or inner areas, rely on buses to get where they need to go. And as money becomes tight, often those routes are changed or done away with. And I'm thinking of people, for example, in the North Richmond area. Uh, that often have no cars. They're working in jobs maybe at night that other people choose not to work in, and they have no way to get there. We need to find a way to bring equity and transportation services to people who are lower income, working, wanting to work, wanting to get the American dream like everybody else. They want to have stability in their lives, a decent place to live, you know, decent education for their children. I think those are issues that we should be working on in the Bay Area, to be sure that people who live here have the opportunity. Now, sometimes they're not going to take advantage of opportunities, but I think we need to work hard to make them available. And that gets into education, which is really a whole different set of rules. I also served nine years on, a, on the Walnut Creek School Board, and so I'm somewhat aware of the issues facing schools, education, et cetera. And I think as a regional group, we also need to be looking at what we can do to help schools provide good education for all the children who come. And many of them come from homes where education is not necessarily the top priority. We may never make it the top priority, but we owe it to those children to make them understand why it should be a top priority in their lives. And I think the people who represent this region, whether they're board members or staff or boards for the various agencies could be doing a better job of helping educators. And that means maybe going to schools and talking to children, exposing them to ideas they may never have had. For example, children in East Oakland have no idea what UC Berkeley is. And there have been many efforts to try to bring those children, you know, to understand where it is, what it is, what it offers. Some of them have never been on the bridge. And I think that we as residents of this community, whether we have a position of leadership or not, should be doing more to help young people like these. With respect to the upcoming anniversaries, mm -hmm. um, anything else you'd like to say? Well, I think it's wonderful that ABAG has been in existence for 50 years and MTC for 40. And I think the anniversary should uh, perhaps highlight some of the various things that these agency have, ha, agencies have accomplished in, in their lifetimes. And that um, it would be a far different region were it not for them. And perhaps uh, to take some ideas for the future from people who are uh, helping to celebrate the anniversaries. Anything else you'd like to add? 
Well, I have to say for me it has been a privilege to serve this many years at ABAG and also this many years on the City Council. I'm now retired. I have to say I do not miss the work, but I very much miss the people involved. So thank you.